There were many jobs in history which were considered terrible and brutal. One of them was the Keeper of the Heads, whose job it was to boil the heads of traitors following their executions, and then place these on London Bridge, to act as a scary warning to the people of the English capital. It was his job also to maintain these, and the Keeper of the Heads then took them down when they were decayed, and threw them in the River Thames. But there was one job which was incredibly sought after at court, but was equally terrible, disgusting and shocking. The groom of the stall was the name of the most intimate courtier for the English monarch, and their job was helping the king with going to the toilet, and then their hygiene after. But why was this one of the worst jobs in history? Join us today as we look at the groom of the stall, and remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The groom of the stall was the man responsible for helping the king to go to the toilet. It was a job which was very intimate, and often the grooms would become incredibly close with the monarch and the king, and whilst the groom was tending to the king's bowel movements, and the king would then discuss many personal details and moments of government. The groom would also try to gain further influence and wealth by helping the king in this job, and because they were so close to the monarch, the groom of the stall was often very respected and powerful at the royal court, as they were also considered a keeper of some secrets. The job emerged in the medieval period, and they would be involved in wiping the bum of the king after he'd been to the toilet, and was responsible for supplying a bowl for excretion, and also water and towels for the toilet process. The groom would also, after the bowel movements had taken place, inspect them, and make decisions and consult doctors about the health of the king, and royal doctors would also consult the groom about the king's overall health. But during the Tudor period, the role of the groom of the stall was made up of a very prominent courtier. For example, during the reign of Henry VII, Hugh Dennis, who was a high-ranking member of the gentry, became the groom of the stall. Through his role of consulting the king's needs, Dennis was actually gifted a large amount of land, and he died owning at least four manors. But during the reign of King Henry VIII, the groom of the stall title was given to the king's closest court companions and these men would spend time with Henry VIII whilst he went to the toilet in the privy. These were usually the sons of noblemen or important members of the aristocracy, and many men would strive and take pride from the fact their sons were tending to the king's bowel movements. These men also became private secretaries to the king, but imagine how bad your job would be wiping the bum of King Henry VIII. The position during the notorious Tudor monarch's reign was considered incredibly sought after and treasured, and many wanted it. It gave people complete access to the king, where they could put their case forward for advancement. It was said that, the groom of the stall had to our eyes the most menial tasks, his standing though was the highest. Clearly then the royal body service must have been seen as entirely honourable, without a trace of the demeaning or humiliating. Further the mere word of the gentleman of the privy chamber was sufficient evidence in itself of the king's will, and the groom of the stall bore the indefinable charisma of the monarchy. During the reign of Henry VIII, one of the grooms of the stall, Sir Henry Norris, was even sentenced to death and was executed for allegedly being involved with Anne Boleyn, and was accused of adultery and treason with her, as she was close with Norris, and Thomas Cromwell sought to sentence scapegoats along with Anne Boleyn, the king's second wife, to death. It was exclusively a role for men, who served male monarchs, but during the reign of Elizabeth I, the role became known as the First Lady of the Bedchamber, which was held by her close companion, Cat Ashley. But during the reign of the Stuart monarchs, the role came back in a similar way, and was referred to as the Senior Gentleman of the Bedchamber, during the reign of James I. Charles I also had a groom, as did Queen Anne, who combined the roles with the Mistress of the Robes, who were then dressed the Queen. As the centuries continued, the role became one which had many different purposes, including looking after the king and queen's clothes, and also the bedchamber, preparing the bed each night. But the job fell from popularity during the reign of Queen Victoria, but her husband and her son used courtiers, who would tend to their bowel movements. So next time you feel like you're having a bad day at work, think in the past that many people would be fighting over the job of being a royal bum wiper. Imagine the people who wished to wipe the bum of the large and grotesque Henry VIII, but they would do this job to get close to the king, and become one of his most trusted advisers. It was so sought after because of the exclusive access, and Tudor court was filled with courtiers who would scrap and fight for further advancement and favour in the king's eyes. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, 
please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.